Can you hear me? Great. All right, welcome to the webinar. I think we're just going to wait for a few more people to join. I hope everybody's having a great day. I hope their week's going well so far. Hopefully the audio is working. All right, we'll get going in about 30 more seconds or so. Thank you for everybody who's joining in. Thanks again to everybody who's attending our webinar. Uh, my name is Kelsey Noyes, and I am with Neometrics, and I'm happy to present this Choosing the Right Support Material today. A little background about myself is I'm actually from Minnesota. I have a mechanical engineering degree from the University of Minnesota, and I have been in the quality control 3D inspection world for about 20 years. Um, I've been with Neometrics for about a year and a half, and I specialize in equipment cells, 3D printers, and 3D scanners. So let's go ahead and dive into our presentation today. So this is our agenda. I'd like to start out by telling you a little bit about Neometrics, who we are, what we do, and then we'll review 3D printing applications, I'll discuss what the purpose of supports are, and then we'll talk about different types of supports, uh, breakaway supports, uh, both with the same material and different material, uh, soluble supports, uh, material compatibility, and why that's important when choosing supports, and some design tips. And then finally, we're going to wrap up uh, with some question and answers. So this should be a, a fairly short presentation today, so about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so definitely uh, feel free to chat questions, and I hope you enjoy. All right, so this is a little bit about us. Uh, so Neometrics was founded in 2003, and if we specialize in 3D applications. Uh, so we have services for 3D scanning. So if you have a reverse engineering project you would like help with, definitely contact us. Uh, we can create the CAD file. Um, if you have a CAD file and you want to compare to it uh, for an inspection project, that's also something we can do. Uh, we have 3D printing services as well. So if you have parts that you would like printed, feel free to send us files and we can go ahead and get those printed for you. Uh, we sell uh, products, the 3D scanners and 3D printers as well. So if you'd like to have your own equipment, uh, feel free to reach out to us, discuss you know, what your needs are and we can help uh, pair you with the appropriate system um, as well as a software solution. And we will do custom training, so specifically to what your application is. We definitely want you know to get you using uh, your equipment, uh, and 
get you working on your projects as quickly as possible. All of our partners are listed on the right, uh, so from the equipment, the software, and this presentation is going to focus on 3D printing. All right, so here are some top industries using 3D printing. Uh, we definitely find it's growing every day, but definitely aerospace, automotive, you know, all the way even through education, it's nice seeing the growth there. And I was just kind of curious as to everybody who's joining us today, what is your industry? And how are you using 3D printing today? Feel free to chat with us. And here's some specific applications. Uh, 3D printing started with, you know, just initial prototyping. Uh, and it's just grown so much. So now as you're working, you can actually develop tools to help your jobs better. You can print out um, things to help very quickly. Um, for testing, maybe you want to make a fixture. Uh, these, you know, having 3D printers uh, can definitely um, help your day-to-day -day, um, needs. And from initial prototyping, because we've grown so much with the types of materials that we can use, uh, you can actually create prototypes that are functional. So you can go through um, testing procedures that are gonna be meaningful, that you can collect data, uh, that you can then make a design change to improve your part. So you can go through as many iterations as needed before you can decide on your final uh, design. And then you can actually print out your end use part. Uh, so it's come a long way through the years and we definitely see a lot of these applications. And I guess if you're sitting there, feel free to tell us what kind of applications that you tend to use it most for. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about support material. So when you're 3D printing, you are going to be using supports. Um, that's especially with FDM, it's printing layer by layer. Um, you have to have something to um, put the layer on. So uh, it's whether it's the part itself or it's going to be a support material. Uh, so supports do help prevent uh, part deformation because it's securing the part to the print bed. Uh, you're basically ensuring that all the pieces are secured to the main body of your printed part. And I do like the analogy of scaffolding. Uh, supports are temporarily going to be used during the printing or the building of your part, and then they're going to be later removed. Uh, they're important for complex design features, uh, specifically overhangs, holes, bridges. Uh, the illustration at the bottom really does a nice job of explaining kind of or illustrating when you need supports. Uh, so features that have angles greater than 45 degrees, they can be created without support. So the Y, that can be printed completely without supports. Uh, but if you notice the H, that's a good example of a bridge. So you definitely have to have supports holding up that middle section. And then the T is a good example of overhangs on both sides. So clearly supports will be needed there as well. All right, so different types of supports. Uh, we'll first talk about breakaway supports using the same material. Uh, so this is going to be important if you have a single extruder printer. Uh, you'll be using the same material for the part and also the supports. You will have to manually remove them. Um, and because of this, where you remove them, the surface will be a little bit rough in that area. Uh, the material, because it's the same, it tends to bond well to itself. Um, and you know how well it bonds really depends from material to material. Uh, we have a recommendation is to have an air gap about one layer or less between the base material and the support. Uh, this will help um, as you pull or break, break away that support later. Um, and you might want to use a tool to help if it is a little bit tricky. And to deal with the surface roughness, you may want to uh, do some post-processing techniques such as sanding to make it a little bit smoother in that area, or maybe a tumbler where you can tumble your part um, and you can actually have a really nice surface finish with that. 
All right, so staying with the breakaway supports, but using a different material. Uh, so you can use this option if you have a dual extruder. And so you can have uh, two separate materials. Uh, this definitely um, makes it quicker and cleaner because they, since they are different, they don't tend to bond as well. Uh, so you'll be able to remove it a little bit easier. Um, it, and a good example of why you might want to do this is if you have a really expensive base material, it's nice to have the option to use a cheaper support. Uh, since you know you're essentially removing all those supports and throwing them away, uh, so it's, it's nice not to have such an expensive support option. Uh, you do want to consider the material compatibility uh, when you're choosing uh, materials that are different. You know what are the melting points? Uh, you want to make sure that they're they can print in a similar environment. Uh, some examples I have on the slide is um, a support of SP3050. It works well with nylon 12 and nylon 12 carbon fiber. It is easily removed at room temperature. And then the other picture is hips. And we've actually been using hips quite a bit lately. Uh, it works really well for ABS, uh, ASA, polycarbonate. And something that's nice about it is that it does not tend to absorb water, which is very important when you're like us and are in Florida and have to deal with humidity. All right, and then soluble supports. So this is an option that you can use. Again, you need a dual extruder because it will be a different material than the main material that you're printing your part with. Uh, this tends to have the cleanest removal and the uh, nicest surface finish. Um, it's great for complex structures. So if you have supports that are inside the part that might be difficult to actually remove um, to, you know, to get in and and pull out. Uh, you can use a soluble support option for that. Again, you want to consider the material compatibility. Um, and also just you want to know that it's going to take some time to dissolve. So you want to factor that in as well. Uh, so some examples we have are some water soluble supports. So PVA um, and also 3040. Um, what we do recommend is that after you print the part, you want to try to remove as much of the support as possible. Um, this helps to decrease the time needed to dissolve. Uh, you can also add a circulation tank or an ultrasonic tank, which will agitate the solution and also help speed up the process. Um, if you noticed HIPS, we talked about as being a breakaway support because it can be used for that, uh, but it can also be soluble in a limonene solution. Uh, so you can actually use HIPS as either breakaway or soluble. All right, so yes, we do need to consider material compatibility. Uh, there's definitely some materials that work better than others for supports. Uh, if you notice, if you have a single extruder, you can pretty much always use your main material for the support. So um, you, can, you can be fine with many materials using the same support. Um, if you have a dual extruder and you wanna try to use some different materials, uh, there are some cap compatibility that you wanna worry about. Uh, but this chart here is a baseline recommendation. And what we'd recommend is if you have a specific part that you're working with, um, that you, or specific material that you would like to investigate, reach out to us. Uh, we can look at uh, how it's printed, what the use is, and you know, it might be something that soluble will work great for, or maybe it might be better to try a, a breakaway. But uh, you can definitely contact us. I'm gonna have my contact information at the end of the slide. All right, and then design tips. It's nice to minimize the supports if, necess if, if at all possible, because uh, then you don't have to worry about the length of post-processing. Uh, so some things are just the part orientation. Uh, so if you notice on the left, I have a part that's just printed in two different orientations. Uh, the top one has an overhang, so 
will be a lot of support that will be generated below that, as shown on the right. So it's really um, a nice fix in this situation to just put the part on uh, so that the supports aren't necessary. Um, and then if you notice, I have a picture of a circle where I use the a teardrop shape because that minimizes that 45 degrees. You don't have to have support there. And the, I want the circle on the right. So if you look over on the right, you see the purple is showing that supports are generated there. So before I actually printed this part up, I would probably switch that to also a teardrop shape. Uh, but if you minimize the supports, it's going to speed up your print time um, and also saves you material costs because it's um, less a channel that you'll end up throwing away. All right, then I wanted to let you guys know that we are going to AMCOM this year. Uh, so that's going to be April 13th through 14th. Uh, it is the Contract Manufacturing Show. It's free admission, free parking, so I definitely recommend that you come to the show. And we will be presenting Thursday, April 14th from 10.15 to 11.15. It's actually going to be our own Dan Perot, president of Neometrics, who's going to be doing a scanning demonstration. So you definitely don't want to miss that. So feel free to come out, check out the show, and we look forward to seeing you in April. All right, well, thank you for attending today. If you have any questions, definitely send me a chat. And my contact information is there, so you can reach me my cell phone. You can email me at kelsey at neometricstech.com. And you know, if you have any specific projects, definitely send me an email, send me files. We'd love to discuss that with you. And if you have any service needs, uh, if you'd like us to print any parts for you, and definitely let us know, we're here to help. All right, well, I think I'll let everybody get on with the rest of your day. Thanks again for joining and we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.